Michigan also undefeated. A couple of weeks ago, they beat Penn State, and they ran the ball 46 times. They threw it only eight. They didn't throw a pass the entire second half. Um, how concerning is that as you look at this matchup? Well, as a millennial, it's concerning because it's not 1964. <laughs> you shouldn't only be throwing eight passes in a game. But I, I don't think it's it's not comparable to what Ohio State's going to deal with. Penn State is a very elite, one of the five best defenses in the country, but their offense is atrocious. Hence why James Franklin fired his offensive coordinator a couple of weeks ago, Mike Yersich, who used to be a quarterback coach at Ohio State back in 2019. They Michigan was able to do that because they knew that they could just – play time of possession, run the ball, run the ball, and almost play as conservative as possible because they weren't worried about Penn State going down and scoring on them. That's not the Ohio State story. They have weapons on offense and will be able to put up points. And you know, Michigan has to be able to match that to a degree. So while Michigan is a run-first, run-heavy team, and I do expect them to run it a lot, I don't expect J.J. McCarthy to throw more than 20 to 24 passes if Michigan if he doesn't have to do that. But they're not. He, if he only throws eight passes on Saturday, that means a lot went wrong for Ohio State that I'm just not expecting to be the case. All right, so uh, what are some of the keys? What does Ohio State have to do to come away with a win in this one? I think the Penn State game, though, for Ohio State, their win over Penn State does have a little bit of a blueprint for how this can go. Penn State had a couple of really elite running backs as well, and Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen, though they haven't necessarily played to that level this year, but they were run heavy, run heavy, run heavy with elite defense. Ohio State shut down the run early, and then Drew Aller basically couldn't do anything else for the rest of the game, and Penn State had no offense. Defensively, they've got to make J.J. McCarthy beat them. And they're more equipped to do that this year than they were last year when Jim Knowles would send blitzes and leave these corners on an island. We saw 75-yard touchdown pass, 85-yard touchdown pass, but because guys in the secondary couldn't make tackles and they couldn't hold up in coverage. That's not true this year with the way Denzel Burke, Jordan Hancock, and you know Davis and Igbenosin and Josh Proctor have been playing, even Sonny Styles. And I know you won't have Lathan Ransom on Saturday, but Jordan Hancock and Sonny Styles sure you up there while Jahad Carter is expected to be in the mix as well. A better secondary mixed with a defensive line that's gotten after it while the linebackers have been quality for two years now. If they make J.J. McCarthy have to be the one to go out there and beat them instead of Blake Corm and Donovan Edwards, I think that's the key to shutting down Michigan's offense. While de- offensively, as I just said, Kyle McCord just has to get the ball to these weapons, get a push on the offensive line and be able to run the ball Continue, continue to stay on schedule, and when you have your moments to take shots to Marvin Harrison Jr. and Emeka Ibuka and Kate Silver, take those shots. If Michigan is doing this, what uh, it, it would be troubling to Ohio State? What would this be in your mind? So Michigan has a very, very elite interior of their defensive line. So does Ohio State with Mike Hall, Ty League Williams, and Ty Hamilton. But Michigan's got this five-man rotation at defensive tackle, and I think that's the worry spot. Ohio State's offense at this point. I already mentioned Carson Hensman, second-year player, first-year starter, and really had never played center in his life until he got to Ohio State, even if he was an offensive lineman for most of his high school career up in Wisconsin. But it's still a question mark there. So if Kyle McCord is having to deal with Michigan defensive tackles in his lap and there's no push on the offensive line, so Ohio State can't run the ball, that's when things get sideways because – While there have been times this year where Ohio State has relied on its defense to keep it in the game while the offense figured it out, this is also the best offense they've played all year. And I don't know if you can ask your defense to play 65 to 75 snaps of high-end quality football while your offense is busy trying to figure it out. So there has to be complementary offensive and defensive football while also no special teams mistakes, which I know is a lot to ask of Ohio State right now with the way this is going, but – if you can just do the basics in special teams and be able to get a push on the offensive line in a run game, I think Ohio State can walk away victorious here. All right, the two more things. How do you expect this one to play out? That would be the first one. Rock fight. Rock <laughs> fight. I, I don't think any either of these teams gets to 30. It's a, uh, Some things about the way both of these teams played Penn State matters, and some of it doesn't. The fact that both of those games – were basically six-point games up until late. I think Michigan won 24 to 15, Ohio State won 20 to 12. I think that is exactly how this game is going to look, except there's just going to be better players on both sides of the ball at all times. 
but I just think it's a low scoring defensive affair where every play matters. Every point you can get is going to matter because these are genuinely two of the best defenses in the country and two offenses that when things are clicking can be high level. 